Hello, I'm John Ryan. And I'm J.D. Orr, and this is Don't Pass the Ball to Deca Mem, uh, U.S. Handball Podcast. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, that that must that was the biggest cluster F huddle I have ever seen. It had the appearances of it, and certainly by the results, it surely it surely was. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're we're wrapping up the Olympics here. You, you tell me what what happened in the last uh, twelve seconds of regulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it? absolutely bonkers situation there, France. You know, it was a close game throughout. France pulls away second half. Uh, they're up by two with. You know, thirteen or so to play. Germany scores. Get the you know, Jar gets the ball out, gets it up to mid court, and uh, Guillaume calls a calls a timeout. And there's like five or maybe there's either five or six seconds left or something like that. And so you're like, okay, there's you know, pass the ball, take a dribble, throw it away, call it a, call it a day. And you know. I personally would never have taken a timeout there uh, just because you want to let the, let the emotions go. Let, you know, you, you guys should be no, you, they should know what to do in that situation, but uh, they took timeout, pass the ball to Mem. You can, there's a picture, you know, one of our OSU handball kids was at that game. He's got a video of it. He's was, was just crazy. The whole stadium was just, it was mind blowing, but you got to, there's a picture where you can see Mem, he's standing there and there's, three you know germans right in front of his face and again you can stand there for three seconds even if you stand there for three seconds you put the ball down on the ground and back up now you're playing defense that's still probably enough time to you know prevent anything from happening you could have thrown the ball towards the goal you could have chucked it straight up in the air uh the ball still come on down to the ground you could throw it back at your own goal like just throw it any direction besides uh i think he threw it right to julian coster who got it and ushens is on the fast break and boom uh and you know another thing is like people giving gerard a hard time it's like to be honest like those are like one of those hard times in goalie where you're kind of brains off because the game's pretty much over. Like, you know, the the clock's ticking down. It was maybe like a nine, 10 meter shot with a defender on him. So I don't want to say the easiest save, but one he probably wishes he had. So he, he, yeah. he actually had a phenomenal game. Yeah, he had a great, he played fantastic. So silence the haters, uh, that so, game. So, so my take was, is, uh, well, first off, it should never happen either if you don't call a timeout or yeah, if you yeah. do call a timeout. And the way I explained it to uh, uh, Stefan Fassis was asking me about it. I, to me, it was, okay, if you call timeout and you have a good timeout and you explain what to do, there's what? Maybe a one in 100 chance of screwing up. If, you, if you're the coach, if you're Guillaume Gill, in the huddle, and you're saying, okay, we're going to pass it to Dika. Dika, this is what you're going to do. All right. Everybody else, you know, your your next option to pass is whoever's the most wide open. You know, just just what you had just explained there. Yep. And, and to me, that's a one in 100 chance of screwing that up. All right. I think if you don't call timeout and you're, you're disorganized, you haven't really thought through, and granted, Germany's disorganized too. I think that there is a two in 100 chance of screwing it up. All right. So, yes, you, you it's smarter to take the time out, but it's almost like a, a pointless argument because yeah. you, you just can't screw up like that. And, I mean, and we, the other problem is, you know, as we mentioned, I think on Twitter is like, this just happened uh, with Norway last, you know, last January of 2023, you know. Not quite the exact same se sequence of events, but a very similar, you know, sequence of events where it's like they had a passive, uh, didn't take the clear goal scoring opportunity, referee blows whistle early, and boom, Spain's Danny Dushabaya is down there at the other end, cherry picking, ready to to win to put the team into into overtime where they would ultimately end up winning. And same thing with Germany. And the thing is with Germany, so they win that game close. They then go play Spain, win that game 
very close. So who's to say France doesn't make it to the final? Um, you know, they shouldn't have been in the final. They shouldn't have won the world, the European championships before because of their, yeah. you know, so karma came back to, to bite them on this one. Yeah. Just a, just a crazy sequence of events, but, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to hear to break down yeah. every, yep. every moment, but that, that, uh, you know, you brought that up. I had to oh, yeah. Yeah, throw my, throw my two cents into it. What a crazy sequence, but overall, um, and I guess that's that's one of the things that I want to talk about is to me that was the best viewing experience I've ever had for a major handball tournament. Um, how about for you? Yeah, I think uh, it's definitely the most handball I've ever watched consecutively. Um, it was super easy thanks to Peacock. Um, you know, I bit the bullet, paid the eight dollars to to get that, but I did watch plenty of other Olympic events. So it was, it was worth it. Um, also the in-person, you know, just hearing the crowds, uh, 20 plus thousand fans at, at most of the games there, uh, when they moved up to Lille, uh, sold out arena in South Paris, every game. I mean, that's what you want to see for handball. Um, you know, from an exposure standpoint, uh, I had a lot of friends texting me, Hey, you know, handball's on TV, handball's on TV. I'm like, yep, it's a replay. Like I watched it this morning. Thank you. Uh, or it'd be on gold zone. Uh, so I, I do think Peacock was giving us a lot of, uh, you know, push whether, you know, I don't know where that was coming from, but it got a lot more airtime and exposure than I think we've gotten since maybe 2012. I think it's the most that we've ever gotten. It's been the most, organized and coordinated like i said for guys like us who love handball yeah. you have a screen like this I, I was actually using my roku you know and it, it it was it was even simpler to to look at than this and that easy to find i i taped the matches that were on in the middle of the morning so i i'd get up get a little breakfast stay off social media and get on yep. my bike and, and and watch uh you know watch the matches it was just uh just a wonderful experience. And like it, like what your friends are saying, they also showed quite a bit on like the USA network. Um, it would be on the gold zone. So people would say, Oh, I'll go watch handball. You know, they, they say they'd have handball, badminton, water polo and BMX bike. And yeah. you could pick, you could pick handball, you know? So um, just a great setup. Um, and uh, um I I'm, I'm I'm gushing. I, it, it, if you've used Peacock before for anything, it's kind of sucked. <laughs> I I you. only used it one time before for when we had uh, last year. Peacock stole some of the Big Ten Network games, so uh, I had basically did a free trial for the one week for the OSU game, and I was like, "This is not enjoyable experience." But this one, I mean, I don't know the Olympics. I just Boom, it was right there, front page every single time. I didn't even have to scroll that. F I didn't, like you went to the handball page. I didn't even have to go to the handball page most of the time. I just went to live events, boom, and it was right there. So yeah. Um, um very nice. So so I wrote I wrote a a little article about Peacock. Um and I I follow those pretty closely. I've followed all the different possible networks, um, different streaming services. And Peacock has always been, uh, God, if we can't get it anywhere else, yeah, I guess Peacock will be okay. And, and now I, I have turned to, um, you know, just based on the way ESPN has kind of screwed the pooch the last couple of times, is I, I'm in I'm in a position now of like, hey, let's give these guys a shot. Yeah, yeah, and I think. You know, realistically, with the World Championships coming up, um, you know, we saw obviously with ESPN that it gets buried and not promoted whatsoever. I think Peacock would lean into the Olympic side of things. You know, even if a match is coming up on a Tuesday afternoon, it might make it to the front page of Peacock, which is how you're going to get the most people stumbling across it. So um, higher, higher threshold of, uh, I'd say, potential people stumbling into the game, um, which, again... As you saw on Twitter, uh, just 
hordes and hordes of people, you know, high profile people talking about, you know, the same song and dance every four years. But realistically, you know, we just need to see, you know, now maybe going back to the school year, what what comes of that. But a um, lot of a lot of positive feedback, I'd say, on social for media. Me, for me, the content's there, you know, and I, I'm, I'm showing here on the screen, you know, We'd have the world championships, the IHF, that would be in January. I guess I could put a world championship logo instead of a uh instead of yeah. a IHF logo. You got the Champions League coming up in September. You know, they have one match a week, good production quality. And then the HBL does the same thing with their feature match. They have one match every week. And then if we really wanted to get, yeah, you get know, crazy. creative, we could we could add USA hand, handball content. Um, you know, it, it, there'd be a production cost associated with that, but, um, you know, we put the North American Caribbean championship matches on there. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the big takeaway I got from people is that people want to watch more handball. I mean, that's, that was a, an overarching thing. You know, they don't necessarily, you know, yeah, some people would like to play, but like, big numbers of people i feel i don't again i didn't quantify a number of tweets uh but tons and tons of people were asking i need to watch more of this this needs to be on my tv more than every four years um yeah. well you know I've, I've started talking to some people um trying to trying to to bring home because you know i'll just read from my own commentary <laughs> you know this is not this is the closest thing we have to silver bullet solution to all our problems. This is because our sport has a lack of awareness problem that hamstrings anything and everything we need to do and nothing. I repeat, nothing addresses that problem more than getting Roger and others hyped up on handball and screaming all caps for more. And the only way we can really do that is to be on TV or a good streaming platform and Peacock is a streaming platform now. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. But will it happen? Are we going to, you know, a month from now, we're going to be, I don't know what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. This is the most important thing we could do. I say we, I say the world handball community. Yes. You know, whether you're the IHF, the EHF, or, um, HBO. I, I'd be happy with a Danish league match a week or a French league match. There's no shortage of professional handball that can be shared, I think. But uh, I can only I can only speak loudly and put things in all caps. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, uh, you know, you started your petition on social media. Uh, has that gotten any kind of traction? You know, I'm just... I go on social media, but it's not my domain. Yeah. You know, and they're like saying, hey, you need to share, you need to do this. And I'm like, yeah, I need somebody else with a bigger following to take my good idea yeah. and and, oh. and run with it. And that's somebody like Roger. Like if Roger were to share that, you know, the, the Sickos committee, the there's been a lot of writers from the athletic that have been all about it. Um obviously the ringer. I, I think anybody that's a uh, I don't want to say a sports fantasizer, but a, a dreamer. You know, the the reporters, the journalists for sports all love handball because it's at least American wise, it's it's everything at once. It's you know, and, and the content is available. And I think I and others have talked enough to these people enough that they know that building a U.S. market is so much more important than five thousand dollars in rights fees on being sport. Yeah. It's so much more important. And we've got we've got this ramp up to the Olympics. Um, you know, Peacock does have some other sports. And uh Kabaddi I don't know or, why it comes up so small on the screen. But uh so rugby, they have some rugby content. You know, of course they, they're 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 hyping Alana Maurer now that she's the most followed rugby player yeah. in the world. You know, you know, the equivalent of that would be 
would be like uh, for the U.S. to have the most followed handball player in the world. It really would be. Yeah. It, it would. Yeah. It would be that. It'd be like if if uh, the handball ninja blew up from you know twelve thousand to like one point two million. Well, you saw because what the happened. beach showcase went crazy. Well, that's what happened with uh, the Brazilian goalie, the Gabriela Moreshi, and she not to this crazy level, but from a she surpassed I think Karabatic is most followed handball player, and is she had yeah, a couple she, good she, games. I, I can't remember. She it was she was like a low, uh, a low key version of Alana Meyer. And I think yeah. most of it was you know Brazil is a big country. And uh, I think I think a lot of that was uh, the hype or whatever was going on on there. But it was it was something. It was a nice little thing too. I, I would yeah. take half that. Yes, <laughs> I that. think I think the other piece is like no offense to any real buddy on our national team besides you know obviously EBA, but most of our national team players do not have a strong social media presence, nor are they trying to uh, be a a big time face, you know, they like to, I'd say, I don't want to say fly under the radar, but uh, you know, there's not a lot of content there. You know, most yeah, of them will be, of here's, here's with me with my team. family. Yeah. Yep. Um, so. All right. So Peacock execs, if you're listening, <laughs> but yeah, so they got rugby. What other, what other sports do they have right now? Um, so it's kind of a it's kind of a mishmash, and that was one of the points I was making. I was like, "On these guys need content, and the, and the content brands, here is available." Right. Um, and they're doing some sneaky things. Um, you know, if you want to go see, I think it's uh, the Packers, and I can't remember who's playing in Brazil. Okay. On the there's like a kickoff game on a Thursday night, and then there's another game on Friday. Only one place to watch that, JD. Song Don't cancel Peacock. your Peacock yet. All right, I got that the match, month-long subscription, so it, it's going to be on uh, that one game is going to be on Peacock. It's the only place you'll be able to see it. Um, Are they doing? Because didn't they? Didn't Peacock do uh, Saturday series at the end of the season as well? That was Peacock. They had a playoff game exclusive. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they got so many people. Um, but yeah, they've got cycling. You know, mostly Tour de France and whatever other events that yeah, they have. They they would have Premier League Saturday mornings because that's what's on NBC. Right. That's a big, yeah. You know, Notre Dame Premier yep. League. Um, but yeah, th- this could show handball, and we could have our little icons for the stuff that we're already watching. They already have streaming. the handball icon, so it's already you know it's already been used once, so. People so, might confuse it for basketball and click on it. So, you know, and I think, you know, it, it, it's a decision point. You're going to come up to the end of this month and you're a cheapskate. Yep. You, you, you hate having to, to, you hate having to pay for Peacock, but it was so worthwhile. You did it. Yes. 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 And you're a big handball fan. So obviously if they put handball on there, you'd be like, okay, I'm paying eight bucks a month oh, for this. Yeah. But but the interesting thing is like the casual fan who's like maybe, you know, watching it to watch the the Ted TV series and um, maybe that one NFL game. And if they ran like a 20 second ad saying, you love handball. We have more handball, you know, yeah. with the highlights and stuff, you know, follow all season long and watch the USA in January at the world championships as they take on the world, you know, and the decision that somebody makes to get their credit card out and pay is different from, all right, how do I cancel this? Where have they hidden the link for this? Okay. I got to cancel, you know, like, I don't like that handball stuff and it's got the Ted show and, and the NBA is going to be on it next year. And yeah. It's not that expensive. I'll keep it. That decision is different. I mean, and that's that's why they always want you to sign up. <laughs> yeah. Because people forget to cancel or they, they go, oh, there's enough here. Uh, I guess I'll keep it. I yep. don't have to do anything. I've already already had it. Ah, anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's definitely definitely an interesting one. I don't I don't know. You know, we'd have to talk to Mark Ortega. He just I just saw him just trying to call me here. 
uh, about his experience, obviously in Connecticut with the NBC staff. And, you know, he, I know he talked, I talked to him two weeks ago or last week, really pushing the, you know, envelope for getting the word out. And we had a nice plug there from Eric Reed at the, at the end of the final about, Hey, you know, there's a lot of great clubs, you know, uh, around the country, Unfortunately, he named two clubs that are mostly Norwegian players, but uh, uh, still, it was, it was take nice what for him you to can do. get. Exactly, it was nice exactly. to get a shout out. He mentioned yeah. college handball, so I was really happy about that as well. Um, and that's been more than what we've gotten in the past. True, and True. Uh, you know, he, he was a, he was a good he was a good play by play guy. I mean, he made a few mistakes, but if you saw the interview I did with him. He talked a little bit about, hey, I'm trying to bring some excitement. And stuff, yeah. but uh, I had some people whining to me about pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, but whatever it is what you it know, is. You know, hey, it is what it is. Um, then now I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And when I was living in France, they had this thing. They had Euro News. It was like a 30 minute headline news. And at the end of it, they would have like a three minute segment, and it would just say no comment. It would be just a bunch of stuff that they would show and be like a, a security checkpoint for a crowd watching an event, you know? So I'm going to yeah. do that now for USA team handball. <laughs> Here's the web page. Yep. Here's the articles. So, uh, well, I, I'm I'm ending the no comment section. Okay. Do you have any comments? Do you want? So we just had the we just had the Olympics. Yep. Kind of a big thing for us. Yep. Um, I don't know. Do we even need to say anything? All I'm gonna say is that there were a decent number of people on Twitter that made points that said, "Wow, we couldn't send a team to Paris, but we got this wheelchair team." Which means that people took the next steps to make it to the website, and the first thing they see is that we have a wheelchair team. So they don't think that we have any other teams, that we only have a wheelchair team. Again, this is just people on social media, but when they come to the website, this is the first thing they see. Uh, it may give off the wrong impression because people don't want to really dig that deep. Um, again, great thing to do uh, for these wheelchair athletes. Um to go and compete at the world championships for wheelchair handball again, very brand new team, brand new sport for them. They are all athletes from other uh, wheelchair sports. So I think they should be pretty good. Um, handball is just another game for them to, to pick up. I don't know the nuances of wheelchair handball. I've watched a little bit of it. Uh, definitely feels a lot more difficult for the goalies to move. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you also get uh, another thing I found interesting is you do get two points for three sixties. So you do a a little spin in your in your chair there, you get two points. So that's my take on the website. You know, they, they've had the Warrior Games in Colorado Springs, uh, which is a uh, disability, mostly military people. Um, that, what a great event it is! You know, for those people, I we I took my daughters out there. We saw the you know, the handicapped uh, volleyball, sit, sitting volleyball. Yeah, yeah, sitting, sitting volleyball. Man, they were they were into it, and it was, you know, great event. And I, I think it's important for, for you know, Paralympians to be able to participate and do things. And I'm like, you know, we had, we had to create. It wasn't, wasn't like people beat down our doors to say, hey, I want to play wheelchair handball we had to we had to create a team we had to take some effort to do that yep. um and, and for them to go and um i just like i just think of all the things that we need to do as an organization and i i, I don't want to be non-inclusive but yep. i'm like wow anyway i'll ask um, this question well one last note on the wheelchair situation is is goalball our Paralympic brother or is wheelchair handball our Paralympic uh, brother? Because uh, goalball to me is electric. Uh, I love watching goalball uh, every Paralympic season. Um, is this the, is this the one with the with the three blind people? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. So, um, I don't, it, to me, obviously, it's wheelchair handball is obviously closer to actual handball than goalball is, but goalball is in the Olympics, wheelchair handball is not. So I don't know what the wheelchair handball's pathway to the Paralympics is, um, or if that's even on the conversation table. But uh, I watched it in Norway last year. It was actually pretty decent gameplay from the two Norwegian teams that I was watching. So, uh, cool. You know, it's, it's very cool. It's 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 like every sport wants to add another sport to their repertoire and they mm-hmm. if if somebody else has it if there's a wheelchair basketball we need a wheelchair handball um yep. I, I i'm not saying that that's the only reason but i think that's that's part of it you know it's like and it becomes an expectation while well, they're doing that why aren't we doing that um and i don't want like i said i don't want to be non-inclusive but you know for a small federation adding beach handball adding wheelchair handball we've got a lot of things to do and you know it's another constituency that you need to provide support for and and do good things for once you make that decision to add it you have you have um and and this is this is the sort of thing that really frustrates me if you don't as an organization sit down look at all the pros and cons for something up front. Yep. You, you sometimes make decisions that have far reaching consequences because yep. yes, if you're doing great things for beach handball, there is something that you are not going to be doing somewhere else. And maybe the decision, the conscious thoughtful decision is, Hey, we need to do this. And if it takes away a little bit from something else, it's not a problem we have decided as an organization to do this. Um, anyway. Yep. That's All another, right. another topic, for another day, but another... move, moving along. <laughs> um, well, let's see what else, what else do we got? Oh, right. I wanted to talk a little bit about my, my little initiative. All I, right. You, you've helped me a little bit. Uh, trying, trying to get it rolling. It's it's been a nice little experiment for me. I, I know I'm big into college handball. I have people. That, you know what really annoys me is people like, Darren Ryan. All he does is sit there and write on his blog. He's never done anything for the sport. And I'm like, on. Uh, okay, I've been around very long. Yep. All right. You know, I know I've started two clubs. I could start more. Silence guess- the haters. Jim Thome, Jim Thome has got me beat. I don't know who else has done more than two. Um, I, you kind of get credit for some of the little guys you've helped start up. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, sure. I wouldn't say direct uh, line for a lot of things, but I'm a pseudo man behind uh, the curtain. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't been able to to get involved and start a club. And um, Colorado Springs really doesn't have the population base under our current structure to do it very easily. And I'm a big proponent of college handball. And I've been like, how can I do something to help? And uh, we'll see where this goes. I've had, I've had a lot of people contact me. You put, put ads on Instagram. They, they send them to people. Um, now, whether they're motivated enough to take the work needed to go from nothing to something, we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm optimistic about the CU program because there's a, did I tell you about that? There's a West Point you transfer. Gotta, yeah. Oh no. So, I thought you were talking about the teacher. Uh, so yeah, you know, it, that, that guy's ghosting me right now. So maybe, okay. maybe, Sorry. maybe this French guy who lives in Boulder, maybe, maybe I annoyed him with my, my missies and he, he's, he'll come back on once it gets organized, but no, well, uh, uh a guy that went to, to West Point for a couple of years, or at least one, uh, is going to school at CU now. He played handball at West Point. Uh, a guy okay. named Henry Howard. He's a Ralphie handler, though, so he's pretty busy because that is oh, that's a job an intercollegiate right there. sport. They, they get scholarships Jeez. to do that. For, for those Jeez. of you who don't know, Ralphie is the buffalo that uh, runs onto the field uh, at the start of uh, Colorado football. There's, games. what, four or six of them that run out with them? They have a whole team. When you when you, when yeah. you take your daughters to the CU, okay, you know, come to our school tour. They 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 talk all about Ralphie. Oh, I'm sure it's a real Ralphie real the Thirteenth. I think it is. 
Uh, and Ralphie's actually a girl. A girl, we'll, yes. We'll, we'll yes. keep that. We'll keep that on the down low. Um, uh, so we'll we'll see. Um, I've talked to both the recreation departments. They're interested in doing intramurals. I think that's going to be a good way to to further uh, get people involved. And uh, it, it'll be a good experiment to see if something that I think would be a good idea, whether um, maybe this, we'll see. We'll, we'll, yeah. I haven't had success yet. Not until these guys take the court yep. am I going to declare victory. So right now we're in the experiment phases. What, what's it been like for you? You get you gotten a lot of, you had some great TV stuff in, in uh, Columbus What's it, what's it looking like for Iowa yeah. State and the other programs there? So uh, I was did some TV time, did some radio time, a uh, whole lot of nothing. Uh, I think we got probably three or four different people that have been asked to come play with the Armada. Um, my college recruiting efforts, I've had a couple people that I recruited back like maybe like March, April time frame that, uh, you know, I got they they re replied back to me now saying hey I watched it during the Olympics watched stuff on TV I think I want to get back into the the conversation so um, we'll see uh, right now uh, the teams around here we're hoping to get Kentucky uh, a team this fall they they're getting things rolling with Mario and uh, Jacob Robertson uh, the rest of the guys at Kentucky Stags. Uh, Ruben Humata, they got they got a lot of resources down there in Lexington, um, and we got a kid that's been coming to our Armada practices. That's a punter at Marietta College. Um, he's in a frat there as well, so everybody plays a different sport. So he told me he's like, "Well, out of the, we won't be able to play in the fall, but you know, after November we can club play." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's fine. Like, you know, I I don't have any problem with that. If you want to, you know, come down on Sundays after football and." playing some of our games we can coordinate that but um you know i think this is a good opportunity to really like hit home with anybody that's interested in starting a college team or knows the kid that's in college or someone that would you know want to take those steps to reach out to john and i um it's pretty straightforward uh it just takes a lot of time a lot of effort uh up front um but we can definitely get you connected with the right people in the community to help you know ease that transition period so um yeah. Well, that's one of the things that's been surprising to me because I have been, I had to look up both the CU process and the CSU, Colorado University, Colorado State University. Those are the two largest schools, which again, I, it's not convenient for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it isn't, I have a daughter living in each, each college town, um, but it's still, you know, an hour and a half, two hours away. But, to me, they're, they're, they were the logical candidates because of the size of the school and the structure and um, more of a traditional campus, if you will. Yeah. Not to say you can't start a handball team anywhere, but I, I said, like, I am targeting these schools because I think they have a better chance. But but the process is, is virtually the same for yep. both of them. And then what you're telling me is, is it's the same for every college. It's, it's really, really the same. You start as a, a student org. I would say any larger institution, you start as a student org, you do your, you make your rounds for, you know, anywhere from two to three semesters, basically to prove that you have the staying power. Then you apply to become a sport club through the rec sports department. And then from there you'll get, you know, additional funding, additional practice time requests and things like that. You can get anywhere from like coaches passes and, and different perks basically um you know the baseball club at ohio state has like a hundred thousand dollar budget rugby you know a couple hundred thousand dollar budget uh handball two thousand dollar budget so uh there's a little different uh you know the way that everybody slices it but once you get in that sport club realm you know they'll support you to an extent based on how much effort you can put into it and yeah yeah and, and you know that's that's something that i don't think people people realize because you know I, I talk about college and they're like well why are we why do you want to focus on 18 to 22 year old people many of whom have never played handball before and i'm like calling oh, because that's the first time they're readily available it's the first time that uh you, you got a group of people all living in the same place yep. all looking for a new sport to do maybe because do. yeah um 
and you look at like what you're talking about, the rugby and their budget, how do they have a budget like that? It's the alumni yep. because they had such a good experience playing college rugby that well, a certain percentage of them become, yeah. you know, well off, well off. And they, they need something to do with their money. There's a lot of things people can do, but it's something that they thought was very worthwhile to them and they want to give back. Yep. And, and, and even if it's not someone well off, even if let's say you graduate five kids a year and everybody gives 50 bucks a year, you know, that's, that's $250. That's, you know, a team dinner or that's somebody's hope. That's a hotel bill for, you know, a weekend or something, whatever it may be like, that's, it's not nothing. Um, but I it, think it's, it goes to, it goes to the, what colleges are in, in the United States as opposed to what they are in other countries. It's just a different setup with alumni and not not to say that you know <laughs> you talk yeah. to somebody in france well what about x you know that they have like a secret handshake you know as, as soon as somebody who went to polytechnique i i saw it happen once they had, you know I'm, I'm really going on a tangent here okay right? <laughs> yeah. but you know in france they have you you vu or to somebody vu is formal too is like hey you're my friend and as soon as somebody finds out that they went to polytechnique it's two and you're set for life and it, it's such a respected institution yeah. and it's like a club. And I'm saying like, that is the case for almost any college in the country. Yeah. And what rugby has been able to do is they've been able to do that for um, their club programs at these colleges. Um, yeah, I don't know. I Sorry for that tangent. Uh, oh no i think i think there's some value there obviously and i think that it's something that we need to really stress you know to get in kids the other piece that i saw on kids all the time is you know from a resume standpoint if you have that you started a club um on your resume that shows that you're a mover a shaker a driver and that's what employees you know they want to see they don't want to yes they want to see okay yeah you got a 4.0 you took all these hard classes but like all you did was do school um and I don't think a lot of companies want robots. They want people that they can work with because a lot of jobs, it's like JD. You know, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, a true engineer, I would say. Um, but you, you as an engineer know that being able to talk to people and communicate and work well in a group is way more valuable than, you know, your technical skills. Cause if you can't express the technical problems and situations to get to the correct solutions, then well, uh, you're never going to fix they're both, the, the problem. They're both valuable, but if you learn, as I did fairly early on, that there's more brilliant minds than you, but you're yes. better at explaining things, uh, maybe it's good to have something else in your resume. But, J.D., we're, yep. we're running out of time. We'll okay. revisit my college uh, effort later. For J.D. Orr, this is John Ryan. Thanks for listening.